Hello and welcome, I'm Aloisa. This is the first session in a series of six sessions that make up a unit about personal progression and the basics of how to make soul-based emotional change. These presentations are based on the teachings of divine truth as taught by Jesus and Mary Magdalene, also known as AJ Miller and Mary Luck. For more information on the source of this information, you can go to divinetruth.com website and there's links then to their YouTube channels and various resources and information that you can listen to and apply to your own life. So that's the source of the information. This is just taking some of the Divine Truth teachings and making them into a little package that's specifically aimed at parents and families, but also includes partner um, dynamics and relationships because generally there's two parents and so relationships are very important and overlap. And that's the beauty of God's truth is that so many things intertwine and overlap. So the principles that we talk about, the qualities that I'll speak about in these videos, all of those um, are intertwined. They're not really isolated or on their own. They all work together. But for ease of understanding, we will be separating things into pieces and talking about them separately. This unit is about measuring and finding out where you are right now and then how to progress to somewhere different. Session one focuses on a snapshot, how to take a snapshot, what is a snapshot, what am I even talking about that with that, and also on developing the skill of self-reflection. We'll be looking at what self-reflection is, uh, what are some of the keys to develop that, why it's helpful. We'll also be looking at truth and emotions and why these are very important to take a snapshot and self-reflect. We'll look at some practical examples in order to illustrate what we have been discussing in a practical way. And once you've heard the theory that is contained in this presentation, you can then go and experiment and trial that in your own life. In this session, we'll also cover some things to look out for and things that will just get in the way or interfere with progress. And they are some things that, yeah, just some things to keep an eye out for. So to illustrate what we're talking about, I'm just going to do a little diagram on the board so you can see, just so you can visually see what I've just introduced you to. So in the brief introduction, we were talking about this as units about a personal progression, and it's basically going from where you are right now, which is we're going to work that out by, you can work that out by taking a snapshot and self-reflecting on your life. So this is where you're at. And where you're headed to, which is living in harmony with God's way, which we'll talk about in unit three, living in harmony with God's way leads you to being a loving, truthful parent, having loving, truthful relationships, and having being in, in a loving, truthful environment. And it all leads to positive results in your life. And it can lead to a whole lot of other things. And if you bring your life into harmony with God's way, there's a lot of positive on-flow effects and results for doing that. So it's going from where you are now to where do you want to be. We could also write it like this. Where I am right now, so what's happening in your life right this moment, exactly now, what's going on? And then what do you want to do about that and what would you like your life to be? So. Do you want to have more love in your life? Do you want to have more truth in your life? Do you want to be more connected in your life? So that's where you're heading. So you're going from where you are right now, going to take a snapshot of that, and then we're going to move on and go, where do you want to go to? Do you want more love in your life? The whole point of this unit is about having more love in your life. So if you don't want that, then you, this video is probably not for you. Then if you do, then this is, we are now going to investigate how to get to a more loving place. And also what is involved in doing so. So what is a snapshot? A snapshot is a conscious personal self-assessment. It's a tool that you can use to get a, an idea of what your emotions, beliefs, feelings, dynamics are, and to assess your level of happiness and unhappiness in any given situation. It's a way of measuring where you're at. I've called it a snapshot because it's a bit like um, when I think about it, 
It's a little bit like taking like a photo or an image of where you are right now and you can sort of look at it. So say if you took an image of you when you were 15, say that's what you looked like, that's what was happening. And if you expanded a little in your imagination to include sort of everything that was happening in it that you can then, like in your life when you were 15, how you felt, what you thought, what your beliefs were, what your attitudes were, how you were interacting with the world, how you felt about that. Were you happy, were you unhappy? Where were you happy, where were you not unhappy? And then, you know, you might uh, have another photo at 20 and you go, oh, what was that about? And there's a snapshot of you there about your feelings, your beliefs, what you'd learnt, all of those kind of things. Now you might be 40 or 80 or, you know, on your way to 100 and you can take a snapshot each time. Now I take regular snapshots of my life and it's really a, I'm saying it's a snapshot, but the snapshots, the important part is a self-reflection. A snapshot is also a truthful self-assessment. So you're making a conscious decision to be very, very, very truthful with yourself about how you truly feel, not what you think you should feel, not what other people are telling you you should feel, not about some other external pressure that you think that you should be a certain way. A snapshot and self-reflection only work if you're very, very truthful. A snapshot is the beginning of an investigation into your life. It's the first step in self-reflection. It's looking at what is going on and and then the self-reflection is the why and how you feel about it. A snapshot can highlight themes in your life and you can see correlations. It's a little bit like like all this stuff might be happening in your life, but you never pause long enough to actually look at what is happening. And when you do, you suddenly see like all of these themes and similarities. I was talking to a friend the other day and she was saying to me, It's really interesting, Eloisa, like in the last um, week, there's been three different people on different occasions talking to me about honesty and truth and the positive benefits of it. (laughs) And I said, oh, what do you think the law of attraction is telling you? And she goes, yeah, well, I wondered that. I know you've said to me before that the law of attraction is always trying to help me to see things about myself. And I said, maybe it's saying that um, honesty is a good thing and you could try it. (laughs) Anyway, she's going to set herself up a bit of an experiment for it. But the point of the example was that she had a theme there was a bit of a theme that was coming into her life and she it was an opportunity for her to investigate something a snapshot can be taken any time in your life and it can also be taken regularly as I said you can also apply a snap taking a snapshot to any area of your life so to relationships or to the children or to your partner dynamic or to your business and you can take a snapshot of and where it's at right now and what's happening and what's working and what's not So that's really the crux of a snapshot. They're a beneficial thing to do because it takes you to pause in your life in order that you can assess, well, what's really happening rather than just continuing to act and do what you've always done. You can actually sit down and look at it and you can then also see the areas in your life that you go, oh, I feel really happy about these things, but you don't feel happy about other other areas or you might feel really limited in some areas and you feel like and other areas might be going along better and you can assess that and then you can work on certain areas of your life in order to improve those so you have greater happiness and joy in your life. So when you've taken like the snapshot, like just the little snap of the image or measuring where you're at and measuring what's happening in your life, then the next part is self-reflection and they kind of go both together all at once but we've just separated them terminology wise. And the self-reflection is really important. Now, there's two different ways that you can self-reflect. One is you can just think about things. But I've found that actually self-reflection is emotional in the sense that you feel about what is happening in your life. And if you feel about it, you get a lot of answers and you get a lot of understanding very rapidly. And so with an event that's happening in your life, if you self-reflect on it by feeling about it, you'll get a lot more information a lot more quickly. And you'll also get a sense of how you truly feel about it and be resensitizing to your feelings and becoming sensitive to, you know, how you feel about any given situation, which is an important part for personal happiness. There's a number of keys to self-reflection. One is looking at yourself first because you are the common factor in your life. You're the one who is going to be able to make change or the one who is going to prevent yourself changing. And this is something that's very important to begin to understand is that what you have in your life right now, you want. It means you can change it, 
but it also means that you have created it and there's reasons why you have it. So that's another key to self-reflection is asking the question of why. If you do not ask the question why, there is no potential for change or growth. So you need to investigate and find out why you feel the way you do, why you're doing the thing you're doing. What do you get out of that? What does it give you? There's so many whys to explore, but one key is look yourself first, two, ask why. If you do not see problems in your life or you do not think something is a problem or you're in denial about a problem, you will never, ever change. You will never look at it. You will skip over it. And humans are like masters at avoidance. Like we are masters at getting away from emotions, at having tactics to get away from emotions, at getting away from things that we perceive are unpleasant. Uh, even some things that are actually really enjoyable because we might have a fear or a judgment or a worry about that thing, we will not explore it. And we won't find out even if we really like something or not. We have so many ways that we avoid things. You know, we might minimize things, justify things. All of those things you can look at by self-reflecting and begin to examine your life and where you're doing. Like, what are your methods for avoiding areas of your life? What are your methods for getting what you want, possibly at the expense of others? So, yeah, looking at yourself, feeling, like be very sensitizing to your feeling. And that's the beauty of self-reflection. The skill of self-reflection is emotional. It might begin off intellectually, but in the end, you want it to be emotional in the sense you're feeling about your life and what is happening and why things are happening. Another key to self-reflection is being truthful. I mentioned this just a bit earlier. I cannot reiterate this enough, is truth, 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 truth. Be honest with yourself. One of the worst things that you can possibly do in ever is not be honest with yourself. If you are lying to yourself, you will not change. If you are dishonest with others, you're going to cause pain and suffering for yourself as well as for them in the, in the long term. Truth is key. So often we avoid truth about our own lives because it may mean that we either have to act in order to do something or it means that what we've been trying to avoid or feel is painful and uncomfortable suddenly becomes real. That's what I notice with a lot of people. So I've had some people say to me, truth hurts. You know, truth is really painful. And as I am like, no, joy is like <laughs> the biggest joy ever. Like truth cuts through the fear. Truth, like it, it does, it, it alleviates fear. It's like a balm, a soothing balm for fear. If you know the truth, you can actually make practical, reasoned, thought out, informed decisions. Without truth, without being honest about things, you can't do that. There's so much pain when a partner lies to you. And some people even say, no, don't even tell me. Don't tell me the truth. All you are doing is prolonging pain and suffering. And we have a lot of beliefs around like this truth hurts thing, which I completely disagree with, that it hurts. But when we have been taught false definitions of love or false things about truth, we can associate a lot of things that happen in our life that it's the truth hurting us. This isn't actually true. It's just that we have pain and we've associated it with that. Or it's that when someone's truth with us exposes something in us that feels painful, and it's a key thing to reflect on in your life is to go, okay, is it the truth that's actually hurting or is it that my response to that truth or my feelings that have now been exposed are the thing that actually hurts? And if you self-reflect, you will find that it's actually the feelings you have around, you know, being truth, which might have been instilled in you when you were very, very young, um, or it might have been something that has grown as you've got older. But I encourage you to self-reflect on truth. Um, how you feel about it, what your thoughts and perceptions are about it, what your relationship to truth has been, um, what you would like your relationship to, with truth to be. Because if you're not truthful, you will not actually see exactly what's going on in your life. If you're not truthful, there's actually only disadvantages if you're not truthful. Again, you may not believe that yet, but that is the truth. And truth is the only way 
that you are going to be able to take a snapshot and actually assess your life and then make some changes. If you're not truthful with yourself, you're going to skip over things, you're going to omit things, meaning you're not going to even admit that there is an issue, you're going to leave things out. And because this is a parent and family resource, once you've looked at yourself, it's a good thing to share with your partner. And so if you can't be truthful with yourself, it's going to be very hard to be truthful with your partner. The truth creates closeness and connection. If you've been lying to your partner, though, for, very, for many, many, many years, for instance, or even just since the beginning of your relationship, and you've been lying to yourself, there's obviously going to be some upheaval and probably some reactions that you might not like very much. And you might go, oh, I see, it was the truth. That lady, Eloisa, she told me I should be truthful. And now look what's happened. And I suggest to you, you know, have some humility in the sense of let yourself feel what you feel. And when you're, you know, you can have a discussion with your partner before you begin and say, like, I really want to be more truthful with you. And I know that I've had some, you know, lied and I'd like to set the record straight now. And your partner's allowed to have whatever reaction they have if you go down that line and they need to have the reaction that they have. But if they also have a goal to be loving and truthful, they will work through their feelings and you don't know what that will be like afterwards. They may choose to go, they may not, you know. Um, truth does have this lovely way of causing you to need to make decisions and to take some action. And I think that's why often people avoid the truth is because then they think, oh man, I'm going to have to act. And sometimes they don't want to do that for a whole lot of other emotional reasons. So I've kind of got a little bit ahead of myself so already talking about truth and emotions. But first, I just want to skip back to self-reflection for a moment. Another aspect of the snapshot and self-reflection is to assess where you spend your time. This is very helpful and can give you a really nice uh, snapshot image of what's important and where your priorities are in your life. And you'll be able to see very easily what you're doing and what you value and think is important by taking that snapshot. So for instance, where you spend your time, like how much time do you spend sleeping? How much time do you spend eating or preparing food? How much time do you spend, say, working? How much time in that work day do you spend like trying not to do your work? How much time do you spend loving your work? How much time do you spend with your family, with the children? If both parties does this, you'll be able to assess and see where the priorities in the relationship are and also where the priorities and where, where you spend your time and what you value. And it's a very good little snapshot to take so that you can see what's important. So remember, this presentation is about finding out about you, getting to know you, um, your emotional self, and also what you do and why you do it. Taking that little snapshot and assessing like where you spend your time, that is going to help you to see what your values and um, what is important in your life. So let's continue with truth and with emotion. So sort of talked about it very fleetingly about some of the beliefs or feelings you might have about truth. And so now that you've heard about self-reflection, I would reflect on how you feel about truth, how you feel about personal truth, like when things are said to you that are truthful, how you feel about actually being truthful with other people, how you, like, you, you might have memories about different things that happened when you were a young child. A lot of the things that the reasons why we do what we do now are avoiding pain um, from our past, actually particularly from when we were children. And this self-reflection is also about examining your beliefs and why you do what you do. Because some beliefs, literally, you can hear a different possibility and you're like, ah, oh, yep, that belief, goodbye. Other beliefs are very emotionally instilled in us. We are really firmly set in them and we believe them wholeheartedly. Those ones are going to take an emotional process to actually release from us in order that we can have a different belief. And the key with beliefs is that you can release a false belief, but if you don't receive truth on the matter, and again, I would say like it's from God's truth on that matter, you may not have that belief anymore, but you might not know the truth about that thing either. So this brings me to, I just want to have a little bit of a definition or explanation about truth. In these presentations, I talk a lot about truth and there's personal truth. That's like the facts of your life. It's what's happened um, to you. It's the truth about what has happened. And also there's the truth of how you feel about what has happened. 
And that might mean that you feel really angry about something or you're very afraid about something or you're really happy about something or you, you have a whole, like so many different, you know, um, feelings and how you feel is the truth of your feelings. So there's sort of like a number of things that are combined into personal truth. Then there's God's truth, or you could say absolute truth, universal truth. So God's truth is the absolute truth. Now, in the world, there's all of these beliefs about truth, and people say, oh, there's your truth, and there's my truth, and there's all shades of truth. That's not true. There is actually absolute truth, and that is God's truth. Whether you want to believe that or not, it is true. So there are facts. It's like gravity. It is a fact that gravity exists and you're pulled to the earth. God made that. That's a truth about the physical universe that God has created. There's also truths about love, truths about love and truth about spiritual matters and truth about emotional matters and truth about sexual matters and truth about physical matters and truth about every single thing that you can ever think of, actually. And if you don't seek God's truth, then you're just going to pick up some other idea that's floating around and it might be true from God's perspective and it might not be. So you'll hear me referencing often like God's perspective and that's because or love and when I talk speaking about love or truth I am unless otherwise specifically um, stating referring to God's version of these things because to me that's like the absolute thing and if I can discover what God's truth is on, on, a, on a matter then I can actually understand what's really truthfully going on. So when you are self-reflecting and you are thinking about your life and how you feel about it, just keep in mind that what you feel might not be God's truth about the matter, but it is your feeling and you do need to feel your feeling. But often what ends up happening as humans as we then act in our feeling as though it is true and then all kinds of bad things happen. And if that is the case in your life, then that is a feedback system and an indicator that you're out of harmony with God's truth or God's truth and God's love. And that's an important thing to measure because if you really want to progress and to understand the universe and do things what I call the rapid way or God's way, then you need to also understand how God feels about things and what the truth is from God's perspective. Uh, this video on the self-reflection is about finding out God's truth. What is true? What actually happened to you? Um, what are you doing to others? What are you doing in your life? What are the actions you are taking? Why are you taking them? So this isn't, that's the investigative um, process. I often think of myself as like a little super sleuth and I'm like a little detective in my own life to find out about my own soul and what, what's going on and why I do what I do and why I respond like I do and why I respond in one, one way in one situation with a certain set of people and I'm in a completely different with, with other people, you know. Why do I get all worried about things in one moment or one situation and I'm completely fine and like calm and collected and onto it in another situation, as an example. And there's reasons, there's emotional reasons um, for why that is happening. And I can find out the answers to all those things. So that's the benefit of developing the skill of self-reflection. If you engage this process and you experiment with it, you will come to find that uh, emotion is the most rapid way to find out about anything. By feeling things, it's much faster than trying to think through things. An important question to ask yourself in the reflection in the self-reflection is do you want to change? Because as I said, this whole unit is about creating positive personal change and making changes in your life. If you do not want to change, you won't. You just won't. So again, this is where truth and honesty comes in. Be honest with yourself. Do you want to change? If you go, no, actually I don't. And you might on some issues and on other issues, you're like, no, and you get stubborn and you're like, no, definitely don't want to. I suggest again, self-reflect, find out why. You'll have reasons about why you don't want to and what you might perceive you're going to lose or what you perceive will happen to you if you do or you have all kinds of feelings and thoughts about it. And the beauty of self-reflection is you can find out what those are. And then if it's just a fear, then you can go, oh, it's just a fear. I just need to work through that. And then there could be a different possibility and a different outcome. In order to make change, you need to have a passionate desire to do so. There's going to be things in your life that you're going to hit up against that are you know, immoral or not nice about you. You will find through this process that unless you love you're not a nice person 
And it's an illusion that we create. A lot of us want to believe that we're really nice people and we're doing all these lovely things. But as you come to actually find out more about yourself, you will find that there's areas of your life where you're not being nice to other people. You're actually doing things in order just to get something for your own gratification or you might be using people or you might be doing all of these things and sacrificing yourself. None of those things are nice, but often we believe they are good things about ourselves and this is a shift that needs to make and self-reflection can help you to analyze your life. Again, I recommend emotionally rather than intellectually but it is a way that you can come to know and understand why you do what you do and what motivates you to do those things. As I said earlier, and I will say it probably many times, is you cannot change others. You can only change yourself. And this snapshot and self-reflection is about you. And it's about you knowing you and deciding if you want to change. If you're in a partner relationship, a fun exercise to do with your partner and you can get to know a lot about each other by doing this and probably things that you didn't know about each other because I notice in relationships that a lot of the time one or both parties are not being completely honest with each other and they're not actually saying what they really feel about something and we get into a dynamic in relationships where we just end up sort of living our lives every day kind of going through motions but we're not developing our relationship to get closer and growing and you know part of growing is changing God's made it for us to grow and change because that brings a lot of joy and happiness often we're so scared of changing or we have a lot of beliefs or worries about certain things and change that we try and stop that and we get into like the same old life and no wonder you get unhappy because we weren't ever meant designed God didn't design us to remain stagnant God designed us to infinitely grow. Okay, let's look at the snapshot and self-reflection in a practical example. So when I heard divine truth, this is something that I um, did. And Jesus and Mary actually did an assistance group in 2014. And there's there's some really lovely presentations exactly on this of measuring where you're at right now. And that is what I'm labeling as the snapshot. And it's, um, I'll put a link to that presentation if you're interested in looking at it. But What you basically did is I will apply practically now to a parenting situation is I went home and I said, okay, let's take a snapshot of my life. What's happening in my life? How do I feel about my life? And in a real brief nutshell, my life was chaotic. Um, There was zero, there was just zero boundaries. So um, my relationships also that like they weren't going well. In the sense that we weren't very close, we were sort of going through our daily lives. I said I just wasn't coping, I had no energy really for myself. I just wanted to sleep all the time or just get away from my life in whatever way I could. I, that was like, this was before I heard Divine Truth. So that was the snapshot of my life. Unhappy, chaos, raining, not knowing what to do about it, feeling clueless, seeing there's a problem, like it's obvious there was a problem, but I had no idea what to do about it. And I didn't think that I could do anything about it. I felt helpless. So I was, had also had demands on my ex-husband and I wanted him to sort of save me from that. He also wasn't coping very well, so he didn't really know what to do. So both of us were like the sort of clueless couple and life was never improving. People would say things to me and to my ex-husband about me, about how the kids were out of control and how I was like pretty much a really crappy parent. I couldn't have a conversation. The children would be climbing literally, as soon as I started talking to someone, they would be climbing all over me and yelling and screaming and moaning and whimpering and like just making noise. As soon as I stopped the conversation, they'd stop. If my entire attention was not particularly on, and we have a daughter and two sons, particularly if the attention was not on the boys, they would just be interrupting and disruptive. They wanted my full attention all of the time. And I, ha- and I felt that I had to do that. So that's the snapshot of my life. Now, how I felt about it was just like overwhelmed. I couldn't cope. Um, when I actually drilled down into that and actually felt about it, I felt really angry a lot of the time, like really angry. And under that, I felt really sad and also really afraid that I couldn't do anything. There was a lot of fears also about my own self uh, that I, I discovered. You know, I didn't feel like I was a good mum. 
I was really afraid of how people would treat me um, badly. I felt like I had to have it all together and I didn't. And if I admitted to myself that I didn't, then there was a lot of feelings about that. So all of those, the snapshot that I described of the physical things that were happening, they were all like effects that were pointing to specific things within myself that as I started emotionally reflecting on, and one of my key questions to myself was, how do I feel about, and then fill in the blanks. So how do I feel about the way the house gets dirty 15 minutes after I cleaned it? And then I would feel that. And that was part of, um, I suppose that's a bit of a next step, but that was sort of part of my self-reflection. So that was the snapshot before I heard Divine Truth. Then I heard Divine Truth. And Divine Truth gave me an opening and information that there was different possibilities, that there was a different way to do something. Um, One of those things is what I'm telling you now, like examine your life, where you're at, the, you know, what's happening, um, then self-reflect about it and why is that happening. And our next presentation will be cause and effect and we'll talk more in detail about that. But having new possibilities made me go, okay, like I'm going to try for real some experiments with the principles of divine truth and I'm going to apply those to my life and I'm going to see what happens. And the beauty of doing that was that there was real change, like immediate. So as soon as I started connecting to the feeling I had about whatever was happening in my life, for instance, there was one time where the children were just like literally running around screaming and like just running from one end of the house, like doing laps, like just screaming. And I was just, I just, usually I would try and stop them or try and just ignore them or try and black it out or just try and keep going with my life and let it all happen. This time I just sat down on the floor and I went, how do I feel about what is happening in my life right now? And um, at first I was like, like kind of angry. I, like, I just want it to stop. And I let myself feel that. And then I went, okay, uh, you know, because I had um, information that anger is just an indicator that something's wrong and it's a way that I wanted to control my life. So I went, okay, I'm just trying to control that. What do I really feel? And then I felt like, some fears actually came up about like that I couldn't control the kids and that I, you know, was a really worthless, useless mom. And there were a lot of different feelings that came up. As soon as I was just truthful with myself about those things, I just said those things out loud. I said, I feel like I'm a really bad mom and I can't cope or something like that. The children stopped running around. They sat down and they started playing. I didn't say anything. I didn't do anything. They just completely stopped their like their whirlwind frenzy behavior and they just quietly started like like chatting and interacting with each other and playing a game on on the ground and I was just like what the kids say omg (laughs) is this for real (laughs) I can't believe this all I've got to do you know and when I said it, it happened a few times and then I was like all I've got to do is just be truthful awesome I'm gonna do this all the time (laughs) Um, and at first it was just by me saying, I am upset about this, or I am afraid about this, or I'm angry about this, or I am. And when I say that I connected to the feeling of it as well, it wasn't just like, oh, I'm angry about that. It was like, no, I am angry about that. I am upset that this is happening. I don't like this. And I let my, I suppose I let my feelings as well as like the statement, um, happen. And it was like magic for me. It was like, honestly, it was like magic because It had been so bad in our home that just to have a quiet moment, even if it was just two minutes, was just unheard of unless the kids were asleep. So it was like this this feedback system immediately, an immediate positive result that I went, wow, okay, I'm going to try this more. And that built faith in me to, to do it more. And so I reflected more and I started thinking more about, well, why are these things happening? What is going on in my life? And it wasn't just as a, it's not just about being truthful because then, you know, God had other lessons for me of like, no, you need to feel the emotion and why it's going on there. And that was another set of experiments that I needed to do and a development and shift I needed to make. But the power of being truthful about what I felt and what was actually happening in my life for that moment was so life-changing. It was like going from feeling clueless and hopeless to hearing some possibilities, to doing some experiments and seeing that, wow, if I do this, I have positive results. So as you can imagine, I was hooked after that. I was like, right, more of this divine truth. I want to know more. I want to know more. I want to know how I 
am contributing to this situation? What in me, you know, um, is going on? And I was like, I'd heard, okay, I can only change myself. And if I make soul-based emotional change, then there are possibilities that my life is going to be better and it's going to be happier. I didn't know that for certain. I didn't know that. And not at the beginning because I'd never tried it. I hadn't experienced it. You can't know something you haven't done. So then I just started experimenting every day, every day. And it came to the point where the experimentation was more important than a lot of other things that were happening in my life. So the self-reflection in this instance was so important to me that it was like, okay, I'm going to just stop and do it. So that meant that sometimes things didn't get done. So I might have had a whole plan for my day and in the end it just didn't even work out because I just started stopping and reflecting on what was happening in that moment. So I suppose you could say I was taking like minute mini snapshots. Um, You know, it was like any minute of the day if things weren't working out, I was like, right, what is going on and how do I feel about that? why do I feel that way? What's going on? And as I said, it began intellectually, but after a while it became an emotional thing. I didn't have to think about it so much. I just would stop and feel. And that's what then I would get an answer of like, oh, well, actually I feel like, you know, this, or I don't want to do that thing. That's very interesting now. This, And then I could see the children responding to the different emotions in myself. And so I started to understand and make correlations and see themes like I was suggesting you do in the snapshot of like oh when I feel this way this is the external result and so having kids is this wonderful opportunity to learn about love because there's so many things that they reflect back to you and it's instant it's in the moment and it's about you so and when I say that there's two parents so it is about both parents it's not just about one but because we're talking about you individually as a parent so even if you're watching this together this applies to you individually And as I said, um, and then there is a different dynamic because collectively the children then are also responding to different things. But we'll need to talk about that in a a later discussion. So we've covered a snapshot, what it is, why it's important. We've discussed about self-reflection in a practical example, as well as it being a way of being very, very truthful with yourself. Like the key is being truthful with yourself and also looking at why you do what you do. We've talked about um, the importance of measuring like where you spend your time and that that indicates your priorities. We've also talked about that you can only change yourself and that if you are going to be trying to change other people, if that's kids or partner or anyone else that's unloving, you can only change you. Very important to remember. So there's a lot of benefits in what in taking a snapshot and self-reflecting. Now there's um, a few things just to look out for. One is hypocrisy. If you're not prepared to do something yourself, then expecting someone else to do it is hypocritical. It's an unloving thing to do. There's going to be a tendency in parents to want their children to change when they don't want to. After you've listened to this unit or if you've been listening to Divine Truth for a while, you may go, oh, yeah, I think this is wonderful. I'm going to um, want, I want my children to feel all of their emotions because that's going to help them. That's going to make it their life better. If you're unwilling to feel your emotions, you are now being hypocritical. Hypocrisy is a very damaging thing to do, particularly with children, because you are teaching a child that they have to do something and you you don't have to as an adult. It causes a lot of anger and because there's a lot of sadness underneath it, but also a lot of pain in someone when you're hypocritical. So just watch out for it, you know. Are you expecting your partner to to make change or to say be truthful with you and you're not being truthful with your partner? Are you expecting your, you know, they don't have to be. If you sincerely choose to engage this, your partner might not want to be truthful and honest with you. That doesn't mean you can't be. This is a personal application that you need to choose for yourself. So just watch out for being hypocritical. Judgment is another thing to watch out for. That's judgment of yourself or judgment of others. Judgment is a way to basically get away from emotions. It's a often, well, mainly a manipulative technique that we use in order that we don't have to feel something. Oh, we perceive we don't have to feel it because if it's in us, we're going to need to feel it and it has to come out at some point. But judging others and judging yourself, it actually destroys and erodes your faith that you can change. So judgment is something I to look at closely and to look at, do you judge yourself and why? Some people have been, you know, taught to do it as a means to get their parents off their back when you were young. 
um, judging ourselves might have been a method that we used in order that we didn't have to feel something or we could sort of berate ourselves or say, oh yes, I'm so bad at that or just feel bad without actually feeling what was really going on. It's a method that, that you know, we're often taught to do. It's a method we use, as I said, to get away from feeling emotions and what we perceive is going to be painful. Judging others is a way to make ourselves feel better than someone else. If you're judging someone else, then you'll also be judging yourself on that issue. If you're judging yourself, you'll also be judging others on that issue. Judgment isn't helpful. It doesn't help you progress. It keeps you in the same place. It keeps you away from feeling emotion. It's not a helpful thing and I really suggest working through. And again, you can use these skills of self-reflection and say, why do I want to do that? What do I get out of this judgment? Why, what, what do I do? You can do the same with hypocrisy. Why do I want someone else to change and me not to change? These are areas you can um, self-reflect about. And you know, this is why the skill of self-reflection is so important. If you do not self-reflect, you will not make any change because you won't see that there's a problem. You won't understand what you contribute to what's going on in your life. So self-reflection is key. A uh, third thing to look out for is what I'm labeling replication or rebellion. Often as parents, uh, we're pretty clueless about how to be a parent in this world. And there's not a lot of good education. There's a lot of books out there, but most of them don't work. And in my experience, uh, why that is, is that though it seems that the effects in a family are quite similar, our soul reasons and the causes within us are quite different about why they're happening. And also, none of those books, I've never read a parenting book that focuses on emotions and on the parent as having a direct influence. In fact, for very, very young children, the parents are the, the cause of a lot of the issues and the effects that are happening in the family. And I've never seen any parenting book actually say that. Or if they have, it's a very glossed over version because to be honest, parents, most people are very afraid of offending you because often as a parent, we get really angry. We want to justify the actions that we've taken. We want to say, oh, I've done the best I could. We don't really want to look at ourselves. We'd prefer the children to change or our partner to change or for someone else to make the change for us. And those are all unloving things and they all contribute to pain and suffering in the family dynamic. So what we often do is because we're pretty clueless about parents, because we haven't been educated, because we don't understand much about love, not from God's perspective, we have all of these false beliefs about it. And when I say false beliefs, I'm talking about any belief that's out of harmony with love. I class as a false belief, and that's love from God's perspective. So you might think that sacrificing yourself as a parent for your child is loving. This is not loving from God's perspective. God never sacrifices any of her children, none of them. And there's every single human on the planet and in the spirit world is one of God's children. And God never wants us to sacrifice ourselves. So that is unloving. But we may believe that, you know, sacrificing our life, sacrificing our own happiness for the happiness of the children is a good thing. So false beliefs is something also to look out for. So a bit of a tangent, but back to replication and rebellion. These are things that I'm referring to, um, I suppose, condensely as because you don't really have any other way, once we become parents, we often either replicate what happened to us in childhood and we do what our parents did with us because that was the model that we had. And often we might even go, oh, I'm, I'm not going to be like my parents. And then you will find in times of stress that you revert back and you, if you take that snapshot and you self-reflect, you'll go, oh my goodness, I'm acting just like my mom or I'm doing exactly what my dad used to do. And these are things to notice. This is when you're replicating what happened to you as a child and you are treating the children in your care or your children. I say in your care because we're all children of God. And so we're really big brothers and sisters rather than parents. But for language sake and the case of convenience, I'm referring to us as parents and you know the children in your care are your children bit of semantics. But it is a key to remember that you actually don't own your children. They're not your children. They are um, God's children and we're all God's children and you are just a guardian and a teacher for a period of time in their lives. And you can teach them a lot of unloving things and things that are quite damaging and that they'll grow up just like you have with a lot of pain about. Or you can love them and let them become self-responsible human beings who actually make informed choices and decision based on love and truth and 
various things that are going to be good for them and their greater happiness in life. And that is a choice as a parent and a family that you can make. It's pretty key to get an education in love as a parent because you can't teach something that you don't know, which is one of the reasons why we replicate what happened in our childhoods. And we end up doing exactly what was done to us. And this is just then perpetuates another generation of damage. So it's worth reflecting, are you replicating what happened to you as a child? Or are you doing the flip side? which is all about rebellion against what happened in your childhood and rebellion against your parents. Both actually end up having damaging results. So I did, as a personal example, did um, the rebellion and said, I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to do the same things that happened to me. And so did my ex-husband actually. And then we ended up having like pretty much zero law because we didn't want to, to impose upon children, but it actually caused a lot of pain and suffering and problem. So those are some key areas to look out for. Hypocrisy, judgment, false beliefs that will get in the way and also whether you're replicating or rebelling against your childhood. So this presentation we discussed about a snapshot, what it is, how to take one. We looked at self-reflection, what it is and how um, emotional or what I'm terminologizing emotional self-reflection. It's real self-reflection but that you can intellectually begin to examine your life and it can move into to emotional self-reflection. Emotional self-reflection is the most powerful way to change. We talked about some of the keys of, of self-reflecting and how truth is key to, chat, to personal change. We looked at do you want to change because if you don't, you are not going to and how change is completely up to you and it's for you to do it. And if you choose to, you will. And if you don't choose to, you won't. We looked at... Emotion and the importance of emotion, that was mainly sort of talked to you about in practical examples. We are emotional beings, we communicate emotionally. Everything that you do is based upon either feeling an emotion or avoiding an emotion. So even if you think you're not emotional, you are emotional. Your entire life is about avoiding emotions or getting certain emotions. And we'll talk more about that in the next presentation. But um, emotions are what drive you, emotions are so important to your life and if you're going around trying to get away from your emotions that's not going to be helpful. We then lastly talked about some things to look out for hypocrisy, judgment, false beliefs and whether you're replicating what happened in your childhood or whether you're rebelling against it and both of those things need to measure against um, God's way and go well are they loving and or are they not and if they're not loving then it's worth examining um, why you want to continue doing them because it's not ever going to bring you happiness and joy and it's also not going to bring happiness and joy to the children and your, who you look after and your, you know, your children and going to have another generation who has the same thing or is in rebellion to the thing that you, you did. And if they choose to replicate or rebel against you, then you, it's, like a, it's like a flip-flop effect. You just get you know, one generation doing, trying to not do what their parents did or doing what their parents did and also... Something I didn't say about um, in replication, when you replicate it, often then you excuse your parents for doing a lot of things. You're like, oh, I now understand why they did that to me was the only way. And it's kind of a way of reinforcing what you then do to them. So if you go, oh, well, it's the only way that they could discipline me was by hitting me via violence. It's like then you justify your own, possibly, your own um, you know, violence towards kids. And that's no good. Uh, violence under any circumstances is not good and not right and it's a power play it's not about love there is nothing loving about violence zero absolutely zero and so if you're if you're engaging in that i would be self-reflecting on why why you think that's okay particularly towards children because it's actually abusive towards children and if you were in a adult situation and you were being violent to them, it would be classed as assault. But for children in Australia at this time still, you know, you're still allowed to be physically violent and emotionally violent, actually, and sexually violent. Um, and these are all things that are wrong. So now that you have at least the theory of how to take a snapshot and, um, self and how to self-reflect, we want to look at then how we can use those to make positive change. And the next step to do this is to look at cause and effect. You can deal with effects for many, many, many years and there will be no change and nothing will happen. Or you can deal with causes and that will mitigate a lot of effects in your life. Continuously dealing with effects is exhausting. 
I know from experience, uh, dealing with causes, causes is the way that God deals with everything and is the most rapid way to progress and make personal positive change. So the next presentation looks at cause and effect.